Hello everyone and welcome to another Win XP Central Digitalsmind.com Win7 Central I think we used Win Central or sometime I don't remember. Anyway, whatever we're calling ourselves this week, this is a video for it. For that website. Uh just kidding. Um uh, welcome back and uh we're gonna today we're gonna talk about uh what are called VHD files or virtual hard disks. Now, VHD file is basically a uh, partitioned file, uh, and for those of you that really don't know what that means, it's think of it as like your C drive. You have a C drive. I'm going to show you how to make a D drive on the C drive. If that's not confusing enough, just give me a minute and I'll explain it. So a VHD file uh, allows you to uh, store data just like you can with any other file system out there under Windows. Um, it supports up to terabytes in size now. Uh, it's pretty easy to move around. I'm going to show you how to do that and they're really easy to make. So let's jump into it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to uh, the computer and you want to right click on computer and go to manage and that's how I do it. If you do it a different way that's fine. Um, and then you're going to want to go to disk management. Now Disk management is a uh, disk management tool built into Windows 7. There's no extra software that you have to install, and it allows you to work with your uh, with your disks. Now, as you can see here, I have uh, multiple disks here. I have disk 0, 1, 2, 3, and then I have CD-ROM 0 and 1. Uh, I don't have dual CD-ROMs in here. I know some of you would probably email me about it. It's uh, actually uh, a uh, it's a ISO kind of cloning. Uh, utility that I use to mount ISO images so it looks like a CD. So don't email me or ask me what kind of computer I have to have dual ones. It's, it's only one. Uh, the disk zero, uh, this is a split partition. Uh, this primary partition right here is where the manufacturer has left all of their wonderful files. And for those of you that have laptops like I'm using right now, if you've not backed up this partition, you really need to. Uh, I think as you all know, to cut costs and everything manufacturers no longer uh, supply by default uh, recovery disks or recovery DVDs anymore. Uh, you're responsible for it. So what I normally do is I create an image of that. I put it off into a USB drive uh, that I have sitting up on my shelf in, a, in my uh, what I call my recovery cup and um, uh, in there is my uh, couple little tools and a couple little USB sticks I need to recover a system if, I, uh, if it ever goes south on me. The C drive itself obviously is the main C drive. This is where I keep all of my data, most of my data. And my particular laptop, as I've spoken about before, uh, is a dual uh, hard drive laptop. Uh, this is a pretty uh, nice laptop. It has about 8 gigs of memory in it. It's got a Core i7. And uh, I use it probably 95% of the time now versus my big desktop systems. And I have a couple of them too. Um, this was a quarter of the car. I shouldn't say a quarter. This was half the cost of that. Uh, of one of my big systems and I um, while not as fast for my everyday needs it's, it, it's more than ample. Um, so I, I have a very robust system. Now you don't need a really big robust system to do this. You just need to basically have some hard drive space. Um, in order to create a VHD file you're going to create it onto a already partitioned file system. So you need to make sure that you have enough room. So one of the things we have to do is we have to go in and we have to check and make sure that we have enough room to do, to do this. Now, on a C drive, you can just go ahead and right click on it and go to properties. And you're going to see here that I've used a, almost 100 gigs. I have 372 gigabytes left. So I have more than enough space to, uh, to do this for what I want to do. I'm going to minimize this. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use my D drive here. Uh, that's my backup drive, and that's where I keep all of my virtual machines and everything else that I work with pretty much on a daily basis. And I'm going to create a little extra area there. And all I end up do, all I need to do is go up to Action, and I go up to Create VHD. Uh, the location, you go ahead and just click Browse, and then I'm going to clear the. Thankfully, the D's are already selected, and I'm going to give it a name. And for this one here, I'm going to call it um, VHD underscore demo. Don't put an extension on there. The VHD is already selected as the file type and just click Save. Now the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and give it a size. Now you can, like I said, you can run up to terabytes here and if you click this down you'll see that it's actually an available option for you. I don't need one that big for this particular demo so I'm going to choose one that's just, I'm just going to do 100 megabytes. 
and um, I'm going to choose a fixed size because I'm not using anything that would require me to dynamically expand this disk. This is going to be just for uh, well, in this for this demo, I'm going to put a password file on it, uh, but mostly for text files and, and notes and stuff like that. Now, some people I've recommended use this particular kind of file system. Uh, for say pictures or videos and the reason I say that is because you can move it around so if you have a Windows home server or if you have another system that you want to use it on uh, that runs Windows 7 or Windows 2008 R2 or above which there really isn't anything above but I think you get the idea uh, you can do dynamically expanding which means you can ex make this larger let's say you have a one gigabyte and you want to make it two you're able to actually do that if you choose the setting that I'm using right now you're not going to be able to do that. It's a fixed size 100 megabyte. So again, for the demo only. And I'm going to click OK. Now what's going to happen here, real quick at the bottom, you saw that it actually made the disk. And if you scroll down here a little bit on mine, you're going to see that it's actually here. It's a 100 megabyte file. Now this is showing it as disk 4. And if you look up here, we have disk 0 and disk 1, disk 0, disk 1. So you're thinking, well, didn't it just make another disk? I don't have another hard drive. No. It created another virtual hard disk on the D drive and I'll show that to you in a second. Now this is where people sometimes get a little bit confused. Um, in the computer management um, under the disk management there's two areas that you have to learn to work with when you're working with hard drives under Windows. There's the right side, I call it, well it's not the official thing, but I call it the right side and the left side. Now on the right side here you'll see this is unallocated and if we go back to the uh, Explorer, you're going to see that there's no disk here. There's no way for me to put data to this disk yet. So why? Well, I think as everybody knows, uh, you, we have to go in there and create a volume. We have to actually create, you know, the disk needs to be formatted and there needs to be some um, actual data written to it as far as the size and, and where it's located. But if you notice, if I right click on the disk, all of this is grayed out. There's nothing for me to do. And that's where a lot of people get confused. They go, well, it, I, didn't, I did something wrong. I need to delete it. I need to start over. You don't. What you need to do is go over here and click on disk 4 and then right click on that disk and say initialize the disk. Go to disk 4, which is what we're doing. See disk 4, disk 4. We want to do an MBR. Uh, if you want to do a GPT, you can. Uh, this is the uh, GPT. Um, uh, scenario. Uh, it's a partition style that is not recognized by all previous versions of Windows. So you know, pretty much stick with the MBR. Uh, but you know, you have the choice if you want. And then say OK. Now that the system has actually initialized it, you see that a, a little, one megabyte got rewritten and that's going to be for the partition data. Now if you click on the drive and right click on it, you can say new simple volume and now you get the wizard. So we'll say next fine which is the max uh, I'll find I'll sign it I and I'm gonna call this VHD underscore demo underscore two I'm gonna do a quick format on it and I'm gonna say next and then click finish and now we're done now if you notice down here this started blinking so it says here you need to format the drive before you can use it uh, I actually don't uh, I already did so if you go in there and you say healthy now if I go back here and look I'm gonna see I now have a VHD demo 2 which is the disk and you can use this like any other hard disk you can use it uh, or any other uh, partition so you can say uh, I'm gonna create a new folder I'm gonna call this folder passwords Ooh. and then you can double click on it you'll see that the folder is empty and I have a password file over here so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that over to here and if I go back to the main area, there's my passwords, there's my folder. If I double click on this, you're going to see that, you know, my little text file here for my passwords is actually there. Now, the really neat thing about using VHDs is that these are actually portable, meaning you can move them from system to system. However, they need to stay consistent, which means if you created it in Windows 7, you're going to want to keep it on Windows 7. A VHD file um, is mountable uh, just like any other uh, partition is mountable. So you do need to put a little bit of uh, security onto the system. So if you have a, 
a particular kind of um, file system or, or files on that file system that uh, are sensitive, then you're going to want to password protect them. Uh, and then also, too, you want to make sure that you set the right security parameters on it. Uh, and as you can see here, it's just like any other hard drive or any other partition. Ready Boost tools, uh, quota, security, customize, all of it's available to you, and it's identical to the other hard drives. Windows basically only knows that it's a virtual drive. It doesn't really care about anything else. You have a, almost all of the tools uh, that you have for any other hard drive or any other hard, any, any other partition available to you. So, I mean, obviously I don't think I would ever use one of these for passwords. Oh wait, I do. And the reason that I do do that is because I encrypt it. Um, so what I do for myself personally, I have uh, WinRAR uh, here, W-I-N-R-A-R. -R. Just do a quick Google search, you'll find it. Um, this is one of those uh, programs that I can't live without. It goes on to every single system that I use. Yes, I do on multiple licenses of it. I feel that someone that created a tool this good uh, with this kind of compression technology deserves my money, and I'm glad to pay that money. Um, but what I really want to do here is I want to go ahead and I want to encrypt this. So uh, I can just basically say add to archive. Uh, Passwords.rar is fine. If I go to advanced, I can say set password. I can give it a password. And I can say OK. And what will happen is it creates another drive for me. So let's just say I want to get rid of this. And now it's gone. So as you can see, if I double click on it, it will show me what it is. But if I say, OK, I want to extract this file, extract to, and let's say I will do it to uh, my quad zero here. It's going to ask me for my password. Now, this is actually a good way to keep passwords if you're uh, an old school text file fanatic like um, I used to be. Um, but uh, it, it, this works for anything else. If you use it for sensitive PowerPoint presentations or confidential information, anything like that, if for some reason you lost this or it was on a USB drive or someone stole it, it's going to be encrypted um, and you got a really good shot of having them not crack it unless they're a super hacker then well you know we're all screwed but anyway that's the way that I do my stuff uh, on it um, so what happens if I want to move this this around well it's actually pretty simple to do uh, basically what you want to do is you want to go into the right side again over here and you want to say detach VHD and you say fine you can delete it from here if you want also, uh, but I just want to detach it. And what you're going to notice is, is that as soon as this is quote unquote unmounted, it's going to disappear. Now, you'll notice up here that it's gone. It's not available to us down here. And if we go back into um, Explorer, you're going to see that it's actually gone also. This is the other backup drive. But however, this is the file, the VHD demo. This is it. There's the timestamp on it. And this is something that you can move around. You can copy this to a, like I said, a USB stick, a USB drive, another partition on your system. Uh, I have a NAS in my house, which was, stands for Network Attached Storage. So, you know, that one's a 1.5 terabyte system, so I copy a lot of my stuff up there. So it, it's completely portable. It moves around just like any other file. And unlike other uh, virtual, virtualization solutions, if you create an actual VM, uh, you don't need a bunch of those files. You just need just this one. Think of it as like a, just a, uh, a virtualized USB drive um, that you carry around with you. This is the exact same thing. So let's say you put it onto a USB stick or a USB drive and you want to use it onto another system. How do you do it? Well, it, it's just it's reverse. We're going to go back into action. We're going to say attach a VHD. We're going to browse to it. I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to say open. I'm going to say OK. And ta -da, there it is. There's the VHD drive, and there it is back up here in my uh, my um, uh, disk management. Now, if I go to uh, Explorer, you're going to see. Oh, there it is. Right there. There it is. So it's actually pretty neat, and it's a pretty neat little tool. This is built into Windows 7, so you don't have to worry about putting on any third-party tools or anything like that. Um, and I hope you found it useful. Um, if anything, you should at least just be aware of it. And you should try it out. It's a neat way to do stuff. Um, there are more advanced ways to do this. You can actually encrypt files, formats, and stuff like that. And that's what this little guy up here called TrueCrypt. Uh, maybe we'll do another video on that uh, down the road. But I do use TrueCrypt for some of my super sensitive stuff. Um, my, um, if I'm working with my uh, financial software or something like that, that's where everything goes on that. 
Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this uh, uh, taught you something uh, uh, just a tiny bit new uh, under Windows 7, and um, uh, we're going to be doing some more videos down the road. So uh, get ready. Uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>